Encounter is brought to you by the Broome County Council of Churches, where we connect compassion with needs as we inspire growth with dignity. You'll find us in special places throughout the community. For those who remain hungry, we provide meals. For those who are challenged, we build wheelchair ramps. We comfort those who are ill, minister to those who are confined, and we remain an advocate for change and understanding on behalf of every element of our community. Connect and inspire. Encounter the Broome County Council of Churches. Good morning, friends, and welcome to Encounter with Broome County Council of Churches. You know, this is a time of year where there's so many changes that are happening around us. Christmas is done. We're thinking about all the bills that we have from all the gifts that we uh, paid for. Uh, there's so many things that are mounting up with us and, and New Year's resolutions are starting to seep, seek in and we just wanna find just some solace and some peace in, in coming into the new year. So today we're gonna be talking about a new year, a new you. Uh, today I have a guest with me, Tom, Pastor Tom O'Connor. How are you doing Good. this morning? Good, Talia. Thank you. Uh, so thank you for coming on our show. And uh, just give our, our listeners and our audience a little bit uh, more about yourself. Well, I appreciate the opportunity. I thank you so much for all your involvement in the community and all that you do. Thank you. Um, I have been the corporate chaplain at Modern Marketing Concepts for the last four years and work with employees uh, daily and to help uh, them through everyday life issues. Uh, just because they're in the workplace doesn't mean life doesn't happen. You know, the alarm clock goes off in the morning and you bring life with you. Mm -hmm. So it's been a real uh, positive uh, program uh, through Modern Marketing Concepts and being able to minister to people there. And uh, I retired from Davis College after 24 years ago. I was approximately, it was, was four years ago. Um, I've been with the New York Mets organization as a chaplain for the uh, 16 years now and working with the Binghamton Rumble Ponies, and that's also been a great blessing. That's a lot of ministry. <laughs> <laughs> well, I enjoy the opportunities. That is awesome. Well, we're talking about New Year's resolutions. Uh, this time of year, people are bombarded with commercials and uh, different things that they have to, to work on. It's weight, there's um, time management, mm -hmm. uh, travel, different things that they have to uh, look forward to for the new year. So why is it important for people to even make New Year's resolutions? Like, why is that even something well, that they sh should consider? Everything that you said is true. And, um, you know, I know that season affective disorder is very real and uh, change of seasons but just also through the holidays that emotional high that uh, even even the world you know portrays and pushes us to get uh, overly active and, and run 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 so when you know Christmas uh, ends uh, the Christmas lights come down the tree comes down all the friends go home loved ones uh, there's a real emptiness there and I think going into this new year um, you know, we have to proactively do an introspection of ourselves. of, you know, really what do we have to be thankful for in this life and mm -hmm. what goals maybe um, do we want to obtain in this coming year. We need to get excited about what this new year could bring for us. A lot of people get caught up in what uh, it might not bring and what they don't have. And uh, that perception can be very, very um, hard for people. Um, I'd like to tell my uh, employees and wherever I minister my ball players and even within my family that um, you know we have to get excited about what God may do even today mm -hmm. what miracle might he perform in our life today uh, some um, encouragement some uh, wisdom some discernment you know giving us answers on going forward because truly you know life uh, is rough at times mm -hmm. uh, anybody that doesn't understand that or believe that is you know foolish because that's it is it's hard but uh, with the hope that we have in Jesus Christ coming this new year for us uh, can be a time of joy can be a time of excitement if we allow it to be but we have to proactively start implanting that within our heart and our mind and uh, get excited about what even today the Lord might do in our life that is so amazing you said that I think a lot of people um, think about resolutions and they think about things that they have to change. Mm -hmm. A lot of people uh, get into resolutions and you know all these things and they end up failing 
probably like the first month out. Right. Why is it important to maybe slow down when even thinking about uh, New Year's resolution goals to kind of maybe consider it as a, a progressive yearly thing right. versus Amen. a jump start in well, a, or a jolt into the you New Year? You know, everything year. we do in life, everything we encounter in life, it, it's process oriented. Right. So again, I think it starts with, again, doing an introspection, looking within ourselves, what are our weaknesses maybe, our insecurities, our inhibitions and focusing on you know one or two that can truly within a time period a short time period you know a week a month uh, six months can make a difference in our life and and the joy that is available in our life but again I think it starts with the heart and understanding that you know we just celebrated Christmas and the birth of Jesus Christ the significance of that birth uh, gives us hope uh, you know, the Bible tells us that, you know, we're, we're really, we're pilgrims passing through. We're only here for a short time in the process of, you know, becoming more like Christ um, in the sanctification process, the holiness process is lifelong. And we learn our lessons so many times, hard lessons sometimes by failure. But again, going into the new year, I think it's a time for us to get excited about what can be. Mm -hmm and not dwell on what isn't or what we perceive as, as mm -hmm. you know, bad. Uh, what can we do going forward with the help of the Holy Spirit of, of, of the Lord to change whatever we recognize uh, we're missing in this life? Because mm -hmm. we do have hope. Hope is what we have in Jesus Christ, and we have to get excited about that. It's delusional to think that anything will change if nothing changes. There are changes that need to be made you know, there's choices we make every day of our life. And I think we forget so many times about the consequence that comes with choices. Mm -hmm. And being more aware of the life that we're living and the choices that we make and the consequences being either negative or positive. And I think people got to understand in today's society, you know, we need to more and more count the cost of our choices because that's where we wind up sometimes. We wind up in this time of year especially where um, we're weary, uh, we're beat up, we're tired, and we need to be renewed. We need this new encouragement going forward. And I believe, again, that starts right here in the heart and making changes that are going to enhance our opportunity to have joy in this life because joy is available in Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Amen. I, you know, just kind of touching on something you said about, about failure, a lot of people, um, you know, are dealing with so many different issues, especially like uh, around this time, the loss of, mm -hmm. of family members and different issues around depression or, or grief. And uh, sometimes they can't pull themselves to even think about a change right. or resolution. But what I think is important is that people, like you said, look into the heart. Of, if you look into the heart of the matter, mm -hmm. I believe that they could find something in order to be excited about or something to have joy about. Right. What are some things that people can do to start walking in the essence of peace or joy or love? beyond the things that they're feeling right now, beyond depression or hurt or mm -hmm. grief? Well, I think it starts again with uh, the realization that we're a fragile people. Mm -hmm. We really are. And, you know, since the day of the fall of man back in the garden, life became hard, life became tough. I think what we need to do is we need to, first of all, in our own personal um, encounters with people, we need to be encouragers for them. Uh, we need to be uh, ambassadors uh, for Christ and showing others uh, the transformation maybe that has taken place in our life and not being afraid to share that either in a loving way. Mm -hmm. uh, so many times people become very, very judgmental. I don't think that's what the Lord wants. You know, He's the ultimate judge. We're to be a tool of His and to, uh, to encourage and love others. But I think people have got to just make a personal decision or choice that they're tired of living the way that they're living. But again, they must surround themselves in an environment with people who are there to reach out. Um, you know, there are different programs in the community. You know, the employees I work with at uh, MMC, for an example, you know, are no different than me and you. You know, we wake up every day, we have to face life. But everybody, people are diverse, you know. Um, my situation may diff be different than yours. Yours may be different than, than your neighbor or somebody else, but we all have life issues and problems. And what we need to do is 
is make that proactive choice again to say though, I'm tired of living this way. And sometimes we have to take onus of, I need to seek answers, wherever they may be within the community, with the agencies, uh, mental health agencies. Uh, UHS has wonderful programs, uh, the VA, um, the employees I work with, again, I work with a lot of single moms trying to raise their kids. I'm working with families who are uh, working through drug and alcohol issues within their home. Mm -hmm. uh, the opiate crisis here in Broome mm -hmm. County right now is very, very real. I've been heavily involved in that in the last three to four years. Um, I can't tell you how many you know families I've had to counsel through that harsh uh, reality of a, of a child you know going wayward, mm -hmm. maybe. And you know I've done many uh, burials in the last few years of, of people who were just like you and me. I think what it boils down to is that the reality of this world is, again, um, that the choices that we make and the people we surround ourselves with are going to make a major difference. If we're hanging out with negative people, if we're hanging out with people who aren't making wise choices, we have to be careful because ultimately we'll become like them and we mm -hmm. find ourselves entrenched in this hole of darkness. And the one thing that we have in Jesus Christ and God's people is light, you mm -hmm. know, and that, that ultimately is hope. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, I think people need to understand too that prayer is very real. Mm -hmm. And I think people need to uh, dip into that more and understand that that's our lifeline uh, with Jesus Christ. You know, I don't want people to think that just because, you know, we're talking about the Lord here this morning, um, that it's uh, some miracle uh, fix in their life. It's, it's, it's a two-way relationship, you know. We reach out to the Lord, but we have to also do our part in it and be responsible. Mm -hmm. And again, I think with community involvement, uh, there are agencies out there available, a friend even, a pastor, whoever. But we can't be so proud that we don't humble ourselves enough to say, look, I need help. You know, I look at myself and I sit here today, um, I'm a convicted drug felon. Mm -hmm. I was arrested in 1986 in a Wego for uh, selling cocaine. Oh. Um, you know, we're all susceptible to making bad choices in our life. Um, you know, in 1988, uh, I got sent away uh, and went to a rehab and came to uh, an understanding of my life that I couldn't do it on my own anymore. And I think that's where people get derailed is we try to do it all on our own. And just through a simple relationship, uh, with Jesus Christ, um, we have the ability to, through his power, make some of these changes that maybe at the m moment we can't understand that we could even do it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, in 30 years now, I haven't drank or drug, but in these 30 years, too, I've had to be responsible enough to do the right things, you know. And what is the right thing? Well, the right thing is the right thing, as simple as that. It's an innateness within us, right and wrong. But it is a journey and people are hurting today and within our community, but it's people like you, it's people like me and so many others out there who are trying in our humility, because none of us are perfect even today at all, to look for opportunities to help others. You know, be proactive in this. That is so amazing. We are with Pastor Tom O'Connor of the chaplain for Modern Marketing Concepts as well as the Rumble Ponies. Um, and so we're so excited. We're talking about New Year, New Year, just really delving on some uh, topics that will allow you to understand that, you know, New Year's resolutions doesn't have to be so, so fast and so abrupt. Something that you can really spend out over time and also getting with groups, getting with people who are like mind and like energy. Let's mm -hmm. uh, kind of get into that now. Um, I know that you're working with a, a group uh, at MMC mm -hmm. and, and counseling them. Is it better to work with people in groups or is it more or less uh, individual? Well, I think it starts out individually. I think it's when we come to that realization that we, look, you know, we need some assistance. We need some help. Mm -hmm. We're drowning in life. Mm -hmm. And the opportunities that I have start within just a personal meeting within my office with, I meet people for coffee, I get phone calls from people outside of modern marketing so often that are struggling in the community and, mm -hmm. and I will meet with them. But it's just, it's, it's like our emotions, we're, we're letting ourselves be vulnerable enough to say, something's gotta change here. Mm -hmm. And again, that's a blessing to be able to, to be involved in that, but 
Um, you know, there's opportunity for groups. You know, I mean, the AA, NA, there's lots of self-help groups out there, but again, it comes down to being proactive enough to say, I'm going to do something about it. We can't give up hope. Hope is all we have. Right. But some people have lost sight of that because they've been beaten down so long. You know, I was homeless, alcoholic, and, you know, I just came to the realization that there was more to life. And it takes work, it takes responsibility, but again, with, with God, with, with the Holy Spirit within us, and so many people don't understand the gift that the Holy Spirit is for us as believers. He is our helpmate, he's our friend, he's our counselor, he strengthens us, he directs us. And when you believe on the Lord, you immediately, his presence dwells you. And that is our helpmate every day. Mm -hmm. So no matter what it is, every day when we get out of bed, we have to be proactive to say, today, Lord, help me. Mm -hmm. Let me make wise decisions, Lord. Lead me to somebody or show me somebody that, that may help me today. Mm -hmm. And uh, he will, you know. Uh, it's maybe not a day.